Hello and welcome to the TV show. I'm John. And I'm Scotto. And without any further ado, on to this week's episode, or this episode's episode, because we don't do this weekly. And it is the first episode of 1983's Wizards and Warriors. Um, Did we lose a bet? (laughs) Wizards and Warriors was an American TV fantasy fantasy series that ran for eight episodes uh, on CBS in 1983 as a mid-season replacement for the canceled series Bring Them Back Alive. I also remember that one. Wow, I don't remember that one. Bruce Boxliner. Um, the series focused on the repeated conflicts between the princes of two neighboring kingdoms. Starred Jeff Conaway, Walter Okowicz, Duncan Rieger, Joy Duffy, and Clive Revel. Incidentally, Clive Revel was the original emperor in Star Wars. He was the one in Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Uh, I think the only fact that I'm shocked about is that this was just a mid-season replacement. Hmm. <laughs> They spent, I mean, and, and I didn't even need to look up the budget to know, they spent a shit ton of money on this. Eight million for eight episodes. I did look it up. That, like, you could just tell from, like, the horseback riding and, and you know, all that work they were doing in the yeah. sets mm-hmm. that they spent money on this, man. <laughs> I mean, when, honestly, once you saw the name Bill Bixby in the credits as a director... You knew they spent money on this. Um, We'll be discussing episode one, which aired on February 26th, uh, 83, the day after my 11th birthday. And as you said, was directed by Bill Bixby. I just can't buy Jeff Conaway in medieval fantasy. I I think 10-year-old Scotto... Nine. You were nine when this aired. You, You know, you're right. I think nine-year-old Scotto made it probably about ten minutes into this episode oh, really? and was out. <laughs> I actually watched all eight of them back in the day. Um, I was just that desperate for speculative fiction on TV. I was done. I, you know, I don't know if I was actually playing D&D at this point. I might have been. Well, if you were, then I could understand that, that you know, changing your uh, opinion. Um I, de- I definitely was playing at the age of nine. I just don't know if it would. Mm. I, I most likely was playing at this part. You know, mm. I probably just started, and this just did not compare to the experience. Side note, because I have to talk about this. You mentioned D&D. Yes. Someone added some what's called the combat wheelchair. They, they, spec, they developed a spec'd out wheelchair for D&D. <laughs> Um, I, I posted about it on social medias. Um, I will, I'm talking to somebody about actually playing in my first game soon. Um, I'm rolling up a probably a cleric who will be using the combat wheelchair. Um, nice. Anyway, back to Wizards and Warriors. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I didn't, I didn't buy Jeff Conaway from the beginning. And then he uses what is basically a magical boomerang. Yeah. And I kind of got what I was in for at that point. Because I think that's when I checked out, actually. <laughs> this is in no way meant to be serious fantasy. Right. I did not get that at the time. I, yeah. I was kind of surprised as this went on that this was supposed... That they were playing this for laughs, mostly. And it was kind of like, oh. This is an early 80s TV comedy set in a fantasy universe. Um, I liked the vision scope, but that was just a, a very cheesy name for the thing. Or, you know, a, a view screen, basically. Right, right. And the clip of the atomic bomb they used for the Firecon. There's apparently this you know, very powerful explosive that they're gonna, explosive that they're going to use to kill you know the the princess or you know blow up the king the rival kingdom. They shoot yep. a clip the of the entire kingdom. Hmm? They were going to blow. Up, they were going to vaporize the entire damn kingdom. Yeah, and they use a, a clip of an, one of the atomic bombs going off, um, and they put it in a unicorn head that they were going to deliver to her the princess for her birthday. Um, very cartoonish, but I loved it. Yeah. Um, and you knew they were bad guys because they talked about blowing up peace-loving nomads. <laughs> like, they they said they had evacuated them, but of course there was that look of, like, no, they didn't. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. There's this winking back and forth kind of like, you of course cleared that out, right? And mm-hmm. they're like, yes, I did. Incidentally, they not only do they use that clip of the atomic bomb, they also apparently used a lot of stock footage from the movie Excalibur, which re- was released in 81. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, 
And I really like how mundane the language is. Like, they don't try to sound fantasy at all. It's just, right. like, modern language. Like, Jeff Conway is still playing Bobby from Taxi yeah, here. That's all he ever Just did. with, like, a Prince Valiant wig. And Walter Okowicz, who, you know, has is always kind of, like, the guest star in a billion things. You, you've seen him. If you were Was watching TV Zero in the Mistel 80s or 90s. Guy? Hmm? Was that the off-brand Zero Mistel guy? Pretty much. Okay. Um, if you watched any TV in the 80s or early 90s, you you know that you've seen this guy. Um, not someone you'd expect from fantasy, nor Julia Duffy. Like, Duncan Rieger, the prince, the uh, the evil prince kind of works in fit, works for fantasy. He's a, you know, big, you know, British guy. Um, I mean, Julia Duffy's playing the same role she goes on to play at Newhart, pretty much. <laughs> Check the years. I think this might have been concurrent. It looked like this, they were both... this, this was right before Newhart. Oh, right before. Because yes. so Newhart must have been like the following fall. Right. So they, they pretty much cast her as like, I guess she's like a maid at the inn, but she's still yeah. like this character yeah. <laughs> as the maid. <laughs> but she did. Um, I love how she really like undercut um, Roger or, or, you know, the evil prince's little brother goes to give her the thing because he's the gift because he has a thing for her and he's yeah. being all serious and dramatic and you know very shakespearean and she just undercuts him completely <laughs> and then it's ticking it's got this magical chemical bomb yes. in it but it's ticking. it's ticking it just gets very sort of mel brooks especially when they bring in the good king he's he's straight out of a mel brooks movie well right uh I well, actually, the wizard I think was more. The wizard is very Mel Brooks too. The the wizard is like either Mel Brooks or Hen- Henny Youngman. Well, he yeah. he directly is a Mel Brooks character. Um, is like a Mel one char- character Mel Brooks would play. The king yeah. is more of like a, a kind of a Jackie Mason character in a Mel Brooks movie. Sort of. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't really seem like he knew what to do there. Yeah. Um, I love the um, you know the the. The old wizard just kind of apparating in to explain the fire con when they find out about it. Right. He just kind of, he just bamps in, gives the exposition. <laughs> and then they explain that they have to go to Castle Blackpool to get the device to turn off the bomb. And it's just this classic dungeon. Like, you know what it is now. It's right. just, a, it's a dungeon crawl. Uh, and there's a, a pit and a pendulum and just like <laughs> there's so many things in there. Yeah, yeah. And it's just totally taking the piss out of the tropes. And this these Land of the Lost uh, creatures. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then, you know, of course, on the way they have to end up at a tavern. <laughs> and Vector just apparates into the tavern to kind of start some shit. Well, right, that was kind of a bit like, oh, well, man, he's got eyes everywhere, but, you know, he can't stop this still. Right, yeah. <laughs> like, you come in after the fact. <laughs> and I loved how uh, Beldana, who is this kind of, like, fey creature who only Prince Eric, Jeff Conaway, can see, um, but how her response when they when she, he asks when, when they can meet, on a night when the moon is a ghostly ship on the sea of winter wind, when the fires of hell are frozen. So, of course, it, it sounds like she's saying never, but you know that's going to happen eventually. Mm-hmm. I think if the maybe, series had gone on long enough, yeah. Maybe not in the, within the eight episodes yeah. that's lasted. But... And, I, of course, they also go into this cave, what you think is a cave, but actually turns out to be a monster. Love the face. It was very Sid and Marty Croft. This is just like one anachronism and one, you know, parody trope after another. So I think I would have enjoyed this more if they just went one way or another. It felt like they were trying to do the comedy and the action adventure at the same time. Because it it is network television. (laughs) It is like CBS, what, eight or nine o'clock at night, you know. So, you know, you have to go into it knowing it's a network TV show from the early 80s. Yeah. You know, if you know, if you go in with that, in it, you know, if you if you don't go in with that, it's going to be worse than your expectations will not be appropriately <laughs> set. Um, I love the uh, 
a Glacton design. Um, it's these creatures who are guarding the, the Castle Blackpool who have like horns and these like wooden faces and white hair. Just a really kind fun design. Where the wild things are, but I think this is before that, isn't it? The movie, way before the movie. Um, the movie yeah. was like 90s. Um, the book existed, of course. Um, Did the book exist before 83, though? Oh, yeah. The book goes back to like the 60s, I think. Oh, uh, okay. Um, also liked that they established that Dirk kind of had Vector collared. He, he possessed his monocle, monocle which, which apparently had some kind of power over him. Yeah. That was a nice touch. Um, and and then, then... Speaking of that sea of collars, <laughs> man, Vector's collar. <laughs> Yeah, this big, like, pointy arch collar. Yeah, great costuming. Um, totally telegraphed ending, but I still enjoyed it. You know, oh, just the the tidbit, the beginning of yeah, they established that they, um, Walter, uh, uh, Eric, and his squire, Uncle Wick's character, like to play this game where they just toss a ball up in the air and see who can throw it higher. Doesn't um, everybody? And, and, of course, the wizard says, let me try, and he throws it up magically, like, you know, a mile in the air. <laughs> and then they have to get rid of the bomb because they can't turn it off in time. So they have to, you know, let it safely explode somewhere. And he says, and the wizard's just like, yeah, toss it up. I'll you do the thing I did with the ball earlier. Like, he actually literally says that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I really enjoyed it. I went in knowing what it was and, you know, where, my, what to expect, and I had fun with it. Um. I kind of want to reboot. Um, hmm. I don't know. I mean, like if they went with one or the other, I would say, you know, if if it was like a Mel Brooks movie, I think that this would be. If they had just gotten Mel Brooks to do this, <laughs> I think this would have been solid. But uh, balancing both, uh, man, Ed Conway is just painful. <laughs> Well, again, if if you when as soon as you see Conway Conway, you know what to expect. Yeah. So just you know, I went in with with you know appropriate expectations. I think I think it's the same reason I exp- I like Sucker Punch. I went in with like super <laughs> low expectations. You know, in this case, oh, I, I went in expecting a Jeff Conway network TV show, and I got a Jeff Conway network TV show set in a fantasy world that was. <laughs> You know, had a lot of fun with the trope, so I enjoyed it. All right, that's it for the TV show. Uh, we'll be back to um, uh, the hearing next week. Yes. Uh, of course, until then, always remember, never forget, wherever you go in life, there you are. There you are. Uh, let me get my notes open for that. You know, I didn't. Uh, no, yeah. I didn't open up that for some reason. I only opened up a uh, zombie takeout. Oh, I already started recording. Let me know when you got it. Oh, oh, we got another. Uh, we've we've yeah, got another, another one of them outtakes then, me. don't we? I'm keep missing uh, the button, or actually unintentionally hitting the button. We don't do any of the uh, the funny things for the TV show, right? We just get right yeah. into it. I didn't do it. Yeah. All right. Ready? Right. Yeah.